Well, welcome. My name is Mark Blackstein, and I'm the physician who found and created Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. Today, I'm going to review the Department of Justice's more recent focus on their prioritizing an investigation and prosecution of corporate malfeasance. And they're focusing on individual mis conduct within the corporate structure. To do this, I am going to open up another screen here. And we are going their article, which is in the National Law Review, where they are dressed for corporate and white collar enforcement going from 2023 to 2024. And there are specifically going to be going after the one audience they're going after is the private sector as they stay here but the other message that they're going to go after is that they have the, they're one of the prosecutors within the department of justice they want them to know that they also have their butt back as they're increasing their their budget complementing that is their revisions to their corporate criminal enforcement policies of September, 2022. And here they want the departments for the let, what, to let corporations know that their for, first priority is to hold accountable individuals who commit and profit in, from corporate crime. And that, that is when they're holding those individuals accountable, they're hoping that that will help to defer or help future crime not happen. They're trying to incentivize changes so that future behavior, behavior in corporate crime will decrease. And therefore, to be eligible for, for any corporations to get credit, they must disclose to the department of justice, relevant non-privileged facts regarding individual conduct. We're going to stop the share. And we're going to go back to the original screen share, which is, and so in doing so, they also, they essentially did an initial, and this is me speaking as a non-attorney, a shot across the bow, in that they went after Samuel Bankman fried As of 12-30-2022, he went ahead and entered a not guilty charge in New York, which at least is not unusual, but let's assume that he wants to go to trial. My first question to be, to his attorney is that I would ask his attorney how many, what's the percentage of cases he's won against the feds? And I would add that, I would add to that questioning. I mean, Mr. Mr. Bankman has had a plethora of interviews where he's almost admitted what he's done. He's had both of his co-founders, Caroline Ellison, from Al Alameda Research and Gary Wang, co-founder of FTX, have both pled guilty or now turned state's evidence. That's got to impact his their the federal case against him. I mean, at what at one at what point does Mr. Bankman? He's thirty years old. At what point does he decide to? work out some sort of plea arrangement deal with the feds and begin to turn his incredible mind towards creating a essentially a great personal narrative so that he can see daylight at the end of a potential prison sentence. I don't know. I'm sure there are other resources that he may have or options that he may have. Um, I'm not saying that a trial's out of the question, but those that have those who have gone before him 
in big cases like this have not succeeded, at least as far as my limited non-attorney experience goes. But I digress. From the memo I reviewed with you from September 2022, the efforts to combat white collar crime is not going to be just for the executives. <clears throat> the Department of Justice wants to ensure consistency in the efforts, therefore to prevent corporate criminal contact from occurring in the first in instance and in holding individuals responsible for corporate crimes. Their goal is to ensure that corporations take the steps to prevent the recurrence of criminal conduct. Just a few of the air, uh, areas targeted are going to be COVID fraud, which we're all familiar with, kleptocracy, cryptocurrency, and cyber fraud. They cr the creation of their corporate crime advisory group in, in August of 2021 within the Department of Justice reviewed their approach for prosecuting criminal conduct by corporations that includes their executives, management teams, and employees. They have the, the DOJ has instructed their attorneys to consider a corporation's entire criminal history. They're including their corporation's obligation to provide all information about all persons involved in misconduct in order to receive a cooperation, a corporation's a cooperation, a corporation's cooperation credit, and if necessary, implementing the use of monitorships. In doing this, they have to consider all conduct. And if it looks bad, as the slide says, I don't know that corporations are going to be comfortable having the DOJ implement monitorships, but they may not have a choice. I hope you found this helpful. This is a part one of a three-part slide series. I am open to if open to engagement. My phone number and website is there for your use. If you have any questions, please feel free. My consultations are on me. And I am grateful for you listening. I hope you all have a great day and a healthy new year.